Okay, first uh, a few words about myself. My name is uh, Mahdi Shurabi. I am team leader of the HPC software team in uh, AVL Software and Functions, uh, headquarters in uh, Regensburg, uh, Germany. I have uh, more than seven years of experience in various industries, uh, safety, dealing with safety critical systems and on, and uh, yeah, other kind of, mostly in embedded systems. I have visited a couple of transport museums in Germany and other places, and I have experienced cars back in 1920, so I can say I have more than 100 years of automotive experience, maybe. <laughs> uh, in, uh, in HPC software, we're dealing with uh, enabling high-performance controllers for uh, automotive use case, and also we are uh, offering uh, industrial embedded solutions to our customers. Okay, agenda that uh, I'm going to talk about is, uh, okay, what is software-defined vehicle? We look to challenges that are on the way of uh, SDV and what are the key components of, of this uh, topic. And we talk about a little about collaborative ecosystem and how open source can, can help this. And uh, after that, I will present you some of our de developments in AVL software and functions uh, about software-defined vehicle. Okay, the first question is, what is software-defined vehicle? And this is my attempt to defining software-defined vehicle after that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, if you want to answer this question, a better, a good way is that, is that we first ask what, what was or what is hardware-defined vehicle. A hardware-defined vehicle, which is up to now the, the uh, current development of, of current uh, automotive industry, is that we use software as an enabler to do the development of a vehicle, a complete automobile, to push it toward SOP or start, or start of production and after that, this design and development will stop and the production line will, will continue developing, uh, pro producing, manufacturing this vehicle for, for a long time, maybe for a couple of years. And after that, this development is, uh, this, this production is dead and this uh, vehicle is no longer available. But with software-defined vehicle, the development cycle is like this, that after development and after startup production, the development cycle will not end. And this will continue as long as the hardware is capable to get new upgrades and that vehicle can, uh, has new features through software. So software has a, a continuous role after, after, after a start of production. As you can see, in traditional way, uh, we had recycle development. And uh, this is one-time development, yeah? And by having software-defined vehicle, a new layer of uh, processes should should be around this V-cycle to to uh, actually uh, 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 for for this continuous development after after a start of production. If there is any doubt that still whether software-defined vehicle is for real, I have a proof here. If we uh, yeah, uh, despite the fact that uh, that first. Uh, vehicle invented very very long time ago, some some sometime around 1880. Uh, when we look at uh, a first cell phone and how smartphones progressed during last 50 years, we see that in in 50 years they the the, the cell phones and smartphones become become a, a couple of hundred billion industry yeah and software. But uh, vehicles does not follow follow uh, follow this uh, this uh, sort of progress during time. Okay, one, one reason for that is that vehicles are dealing with safety critical re requirements uh, and uh, mobile phones are not just, you, you can use it without any safety critical requirements unless the battery explodes in your pocket. Uh, uh, okay, there, there's a reason for that. If you now look at the smartphones today, you see they have a very common platform, yeah? A large screen, a couple of cameras and charging points. And most of the smartphones in the market has, has this, uh, has this uh, set of uh, basic hardware platform. What is happening in vehicle, in automotive industry, and especially 
after electrification, because by having the electrification, no longer the mechanical uh, features of a car is competing point for, for OEMs. Yeah? And uh, now OEMs need to, need to uh, focus more on other features that are, can, can be, can be uh, created through software. Especially after electrification, uh, we can see that auto automobiles are, very, very, are going to be very similar to smartphones. Yeah? A platform that can handle uh, different uh, softwares and uh, get new updates through software. So this is happening. This is happening. Uh, of course, there are challenges in this way. One measure could be that we look at how much lines of code this uh, a, 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 a normal vehicle has and, uh, and compare it to other systems. For example, in this chart, you see that a vehicle, normal vehicle nowadays has more than uh, maybe 100 million lines of code. Comparing this to, for example, Android, we see that it is less than 2, two million lines of code. And uh, by having and by, by implementing the, the concepts that are in STV, this is going to be tripled, maybe more than 300 millions of vehicle, uh, lines of code. So we're going to face a huge complexity in STV topic. And on this topic, there are also other challenges. One is that STV needs an architecture, a software architecture that lasts longer time. So we're talking about that development should continue after start of production. So this software architecture should be able to get new updates uh, on the software. And also uh, the software is so complex. So there is going to be some sort of platform independence so that this software can be easily migrated to another platform, another hardware. And also uh, this, this complexity is not just about software. When software gets bigger, also the development cycle should be reviewed and this is also a big challenge. And of course, uh, up to now, there was a lot of developments in, in uh, automotive industry. The vehicles that nowadays we are using and we are, we are using uh, has a good level of safety, yeah? has a good level of maturity. And we cannot just easily throw them, uh, throw all the developments out and start everything from scratch. So still, even in software defined vehicle or even the transition, transition lane, transition uh, uh, to software defined vehicle, old software modules and older developments still need, needs to be reused. And what are the key components uh, of software defined vehicle? Uh, we're talking a lot about, we're, we're using a lot of terms software and software defined vehicle, but this doesn't mean that hardware is not or is negligible, negligible in this concept. Uh, but software is really important because it's going to carry that portable software that is going to be updated over time. So it's maybe even more important in STV. But we are going to see some architectural changes in software maybe, like what uh, Jerry has presented, that EU architecture is changing. And instead of having scattered ECUs across the vehicle, there could be central high performance uh, or zonal high performance ECUs that by, for example, using techniques like virtualization can, uh, can adopt multiple functions, uh, can consolidate multiple functions into one uh, zonal uh, high performance controller. And of course, uh, because of this uh, updatability, uh, there is a need to uh, uh, using a cloud uh, to, to get updates, for example, or this could be to offload processing because, uh, for example, uh, if you're talking about having intelligent, uh, uh, intelligence inside a vehicle, all the processing cannot happen uh, on the local issues and some of this processing should be offloaded, for example, to cloud services. Uh, and yeah, as I said, for OTA update and also for uh, V2X or, or vehicle to everything communication, vehicle to vehicle, vehicle to infrastructure, this cloud and connectivity is really important. And also user experience is going to be, has great share in, in software defined vehicle because uh, yeah, as, uh, as I said, for example, by this electrification, user experience is the only place that, that, that OEMs may, can, can compete to each other. Okay, uh, if we look at the news, we see that, uh, for example, what happened in Sh Shanghai uh, Motor Show this year, that lots of new OEMs are, 
are coming into, into, into market. And also on the other side, we see that traditional OEMs are, or for a very long time, try to adopt agile development methods and uh, try to get, uh, get their, their, their development process very fast and quick so that they can, they can uh, quickly adopt with the new features needed, especially in software. Uh, so software-defined vehicle and complexity of this, this, this uh, concept uh, re requires quick processes, but can these uh, new startups that, that become new OEMs can handle this level of complexity uh, even, even uh, if they, they continue the path that traditional OEMs uh, was doing that? The answer is simply no. And the reason, maybe Ford CEO really good explained that in this sentence, that the problem is that uh, the software in automotive is written by more than 150 different companies that, and they don't talk to each other. So traditional uh, ways of development doesn't work. A new strategy is needed. And this new strategy is the proven way of open source. Yeah. Okay, so here uh, I'm going to present you a couple of uh, very limited number of projects that has, uh, has very uh, great work toward SDV or they have expert groups uh, dedicated to SDV. Of course, there are lots of projects that could be related to this concept. Uh, yeah, on the, other, on the right side, you can see the members of each project. The first one is Covisa, which was uh, actually rebrand of Geneva Alliance since 2009, and uh, Covisa newly, newly in 2021. Uh, it has uh, expert groups for, da for, for data and, sorry, and uh, data expert, expert group, for example, and uh, automotive uh, Android operating system, electric vehicle charging, different sort of uh, expert groups. The uh, one of the, a couple of notable projects that it has, uh, one of them is vehicle signal specification, which is for, for creating a common interface and understanding of vehicle signals. And uh, another one, uh, yeah, this is one of the notable projects it has. Uh, and uh, it is uh, mainly uh, working on specifications and, and, and standards, but, but not really code first approach. The next one that I have here is Eclipse STV, which is uh, which recently or this this year announced this uh, this project. But it, the, the project uh, that that are inside Eclipse STV are are very old. For example, uh, like Kuxaval or, or Chariot. Uh, Kuxaval is using VSS and uh, Charlotte is about middleware uh, in, in, the, in the vehicle. Different uh, expert groups like Eclipse, uh, the, like STV Edge, STV Ops and Debs uh, are there. Edge is uh, working mainly with like, in, in vehicle software and Ops for cloud, uh, for cloud solutions and, uh, and the Dev for development tool chains. And of course, uh, Automotive Grade Linux, which, is, which we are also using and a member of Automotive Grid Linux, uh, different uh, expert groups for uh, famous uh, infotainment and uh, yeah, in vehicle infotainment and instrument cluster, and also uh, working to vehicle cloud and also STV, which uh, uh, is a combination of containers and virtualization expert groups, has a more comprehensive uh, approach but for enabling 70 80% of uh, automotive software, and yeah, of course, code first approach. All right, and from here, I'm presenting you uh, developments that we have or uh, running in, in AVL uh, software and functions. Our journey with the uh, development uh, toward software-defined vehicle or make, make a realization of this concept started with uh, this project. We had uh, a successful project for uh, running this autonomous bus in a uh, uh, city in Germany, we got permission. We got uh, we got permission from uh, from uh, from uh, authorities to to run this shuttle. Uh, the main focus in this project was uh, was ADAS and autonomous driving, uh, using our uh, our own development of uh, AVL Ionic, which is a high performance controller. Briefly, I will introduce to you. Uh, after this successful experiment, uh, we thought that okay, we can have. A new, another realization in uh, this time, including the STV concept, yeah, cloud connectivity, OTA update, and everything. 
Uh, before I, I, uh, I present you the, the software architecture that we have implemented and we're testing and working on, uh, I want to quickly uh, introduce you the ABL Ionic, which is our high performance controller, which we're, which we're using. Uh, high performance uh, controller for, uh, can, can be used uh, mainly, uh, uh, firstly, for, for ADAS applications, and it is capable for running STV concept realization. And uh, yeah, IJ262 uh, compatible and lots of many, many uh, uh, interfaces for, for uh, ADAS, ADAS and sensor connectivity. And we have a couple of BSP releases for, for our Unix ready uh, working uh, for G generic Linux and AGL release and also some uh, certified uh, real-time operating system. Okay. And uh, what we are developing right now in, uh, for realization of this STV, uh, first of all, uh, on top of our HPC platform, we uh, run Zen hypervisor. On the right side, in the console, you can see that Zen is booting. Uh, on top of Zen hypervisor, type, uh, Zen hypervisor is a type one hypervisor, which means that is completely touched, uh, attached to the, to the hardware and ha can, uh, can uh, deliver high performance to, to the virtual domains. Uh, on top of Zen Hypervisor, we have a couple of domains there running. Uh, we call one of them AGL domain, which AGL application is running there. And we call one of them ADAS domain. Uh, our, uh, our own developments of ADAS is there and also a VCD uh, domain, which is a vehicle control functions. And also a Zephyr uh, is running uh, on, as, as a separate zone, as a real-time operating system there. As you can see also here that, other, that different domains of, of uh, Zen is uh, uh, running actually in the background. Okay, yeah, and uh, the AGL applications that are running, for example, AGL IVI, AGL IC, and other AGL uh, applications can, can run there. Uh, you can see that AGL IVI is uh, running uh, on, the, on the display. Not very good tuned with the display size, but it's working. Uh, yeah, and different domains of Zen also are loading there. And in the ADAS domain, we have our own developments. This, this domain is not included, and you, can, you cannot see it in the console. It is under construction, actually, where we're working on that. And the other domain, which is the domain that I'm, uh, maybe it is uh, more in our interest, is uh, vehicle communication domain, vehicle uh, control unit or, or domain. Yeah, this uh, internet connectivity is also available. Yeah, uh, the, yeah, I, I forgot to mention that. The HPC platform using uh, LTE is connected to, to internet. And, uh, and we are using Mender, open source Mender, as, as the, uh, for, for uh, over the air update. Uh, as you can see, our, 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 in, in Mender portal, our device is uh, recognized. All the information about our device, IP and, and everything is, is there and device is fully registered and available there. So what we can do, we can over Mender platform, we can create a new deployment and deploy it, uh, and deploy it on, the, on, the, uh, on our system over the air. Okay. And in, in this uh, vehicle control domain, we are, you, uh, we are running two uh, containers or a couple of containers for vehicle control uh, functions. Uh, based on Docker, we can see in the right side that uh, by running Docker PS, this uh, speed limit application is running. The goal is that uh, we, this, this speed limit application, what, what it does is uh, actually getting a command from, from cloud over MQTT and it creates some CAN message to control the uh, speed of the vehicle. For example, I, I give you an example of use case. Consider that uh, you're, you're, you're uh, driving your vehicle and a, a, a kilometer or a couple of kilometers ahead, there is an accident. And that car in the accident, uh, you cannot see it because of care or, or everything, 
that car can, can send a command to cloud or can somehow uh, inform your car that, okay, there's a hazard there and you need to uh, limit your speed. Yeah, this is an example use case. And the car is, uh, the, uh, here, we are, we are, we are uh, actually en uh, enabling this, this, this feature that over cloud, over MQTT, we're sending a command and uh, adjust the speed uh, through that. And uh, what we want to do is uh, using Mender, Mender OTA uh, plat, uh, uh, framework, we want to update this container that, that uh, does this job. Okay, we can see here that uh, in Mender uh, panel, we are actually uh, sending a new deployment, which is now in progress. And through that, we, we are updating the container that are uh, flashing there. A deployment is done here. This speed limiter HPC, the, the container that, that is running, uh, is now uh, should get updated. And we run again this Docker PS command. We see that the hash of container is now updated to, an, to a newer version. Yeah, and a new image of a Docker, a new Docker image is now installed. Uh, with v1 and yeah the hash is, is new and this this container is now updated okay all right and uh, yeah this is the uh, our ongoing work toward realization of, of uh, an SDB uh, getting powered by by our experience with ADAS uh, workflow we want to uh, integrate more and more open source solutions uh, and combine it with uh, our developments or, or available developments for safety critical applications like ADAS. Uh, and uh, creating a working demonstrator for SDB and realize this topic. Uh, and uh, as a next step, uh, yeah, well, with help of partners, uh, we can improve this, this uh, technology and ecosystem together and finally, yeah, of course, contributing back the, the advancement to open source. All right, that's it. Thank you. Is there any question? <laughs>